I'm Kathleen Harrington. Welcome to Artists at Work. We're here today with uh, Betsy Wilson, who has brought some of her beautiful hand-painted furniture pieces. Morning, Betsy. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Oh, uh, this is exciting. This is a little different than some of the other interviews we've done. I would say way different than I've watched a lot of Artists at Work shows, and this is way different. <laughs> this is fabulous. This is fast. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? Um, I'm from. I live in Sagamore Hills. I work here at Community Focus. Okay. Um, and due to COVID, we were looking for guests, and so I decided <laughs> I would uh, take one for the team and bring in some stuff. Um, I started off. I went to Bowling Green. I was an English major. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm kind of a jack of all trades, master of none. Um, worked at May Company uh, a long time ago. Then worked in advertising, but kind of just learned little bits and pieces about writing and art. I did a lot of freelance writing for a long time. Okay. And. So you gathered. I just gathered. You gathered things together. Yeah. And then you found a special love for painting furniture. I really did. Yeah. Um, and it kind of came as um, a gift idea for people that I love. Mm -hmm. um, when someone was going to college or someone was having a baby, I just decided, you know, I could go to, I can go and buy something off their gift gift list, or I can make them something. And so that's kind of where um, I've gone to Goodwill and just started picking up pieces and. I, I, I said to you earlier, I want to be on your gift list because these are so beautiful. Um, you have different themes that you have used. Right. And, and I kind of started, like I said, with college tables. I've got a couple. Um, I'm going to show everybody. Um, I'm a special fan of Bowling Green. That's my, my son. It's a little beat up. My daughter went there. My son went there. My son went there. He started seven years ago, so that's kind of yeah. a little beat up. But Freddie the Falcon. What I do, yeah, Freddie Falcon, I buy a piece of glass to put over pieces that are going to college. And so it's actually right. in pretty good condition, and it I just is. left a piece of glass at home. And then this one. And this one here, I wasn't sure if it was a murder hornet, but no. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a murder hornet to add to 2020s. Beautiful yeah, things yeah. happening. Um, this is um, Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets, and mm -hmm. my son is currently there now. And again, it has a piece of glass over it to protect it while right. he's at college, and he puts his it. game system on it and so forth in his it. TV. My son got his master's there, so I see. So we, we, have we are on a, the we same have a track lot of, here. Yeah. But so that's how I started. I just started. Um, so now we're this was my official first piece. This Ohio State piece. This was just a table of my mom's, and I just started make, playing. You uh, could probably ten thousand of those. And, well, you yeah, know, and that's the I, thing. I mean, They're probably licensed, so I probably can't well, do that. Probably again, just making that, it as a gift and not gift selling it to okay. anyone. Yeah. Right, right. And then my Ohio State, or the Browns one, and um, you asked about process, and there's nothing high tech. I literally take a copy of a logo, print it out, print it out, scribble with pencil on the I back like this. you did in kindergarten. Right. Right. And then trace it on and then right. just take the time to paint it in. So first you do the background painting. And Correct. Or prime. First you prime. I prime. I okay. sand and prime. You, it's kind of like um, when you go to the dentist, you can't fix a cavity until the cavity is clean or, or right. ready to go. So just like work. the furniture, mm -hmm. you need to take off. If it's painted, you need to, you need to sand off any old paint. Mm -hmm. um, there's a great product called Liquid Sander. Okay. That I use on everything. After I sand it, I, I'm not a real particular sander. Okay. I just do, you know, a quick rough up job. You want to rough it up so it sticks. Right. And then I use the liquid sander on it, and that just gives it a little bit of grit so that the paint will hold it better. Just like your filling in your tooth will okay. hold better after it's clean and okay. roughed up a little bit. Even when you're painting uh, a, a canvas, you have to prime the canvas. That it's, would be something I wouldn't know anything about, but, but you, I believe it's, you, it's yeah. The same, it's the same principle. You want your paint to adhere, and it needs to grip to something. Right, right. Yeah. And, and that thing. was something I would never have known. Now, I did start furniture painting. Um, I met a woman in a Bible study named Judy Rickenbacker, and she is a true oh, furniture artist. I have seen her work. She is a, she yes. is a legitimate artist. So yes. she, I, I kind of started going and visiting her and seeing what she was doing, and then she would give me some pieces to prime for her. Okay. Um, and again, she would do horses and uh, country scenes and just mm -hmm. beautiful, I mean, legitimate. I've seen her work. Yes. It's amazing. She's, she's yes. incredible. So, yeah. so I met up with her, and that's kind of how I, again, so I'm you, not. So you, you were like an apprentice. You were priming yeah. her uh -huh. stuff. She kind of just told me. She, and and her thing was, it's just paint. And that's kind of been my motto. It's like if I, 
you know, this item here, this little step stool is for, it's, uh, it's a gift for a, a brand new great neat nephew. Um, I, I painted something on the top and didn't like it okay. and sanded it off. It's just paint. It's just paint, it, yeah. I, so, yep. and you know, I kind of like this one. I'm still working on the plaid, but I'm kind of, I'm now, getting hang of it. how did you do the plaid? I know people are going to want to know. Does she have a really steady hand? <laughs> you tape it off, and let me tell you, everything you ever wanted to find about any kind of painting technique yeah. is on the internet. It's on the internet. So, you know, I did a, I did a base color, and then I taped it off, and then mm -hmm. I did the medium gray, and then I did a dark gray, and then I did a black. I love how you've incorporated paint with leaving natural wood. And that was a Judy Rickenbacker thing. Was that Judy? Yeah, also? that was. So she, she kind of where the paint, where the wood is good, why not show it? It's a, it makes it and it's not yeah. good everywhere. So it's sometimes you just right. have to completely cover like this chair over here. Everything we're going to talk about yeah. that chair. That is amazing. But it, yeah. the paint, the wood was not right. salvageable. So okay. Okay. So nothing to show. So, so anyway, back to these. We've, so we've done our professional, we do a oh, Green Bay. You know, we did go. Green Bay Packers as a 50th Kentucky. birthday gift for Dave. Um, here's Kent State. Again, these are just trace yes. right. and just take the time the and, and paint. And yep. print them out and um, James Madison, Xavier. Now this one was kind of fun because I did a, I don't know if you can tell, I did a dry brush Okay, technique, the technique over it. Right. So I painted the base gray and then took a black, super dry brush. Uh, with very little paint? With hardly anything on it at all. And that's mm -hmm. a trick because you have to finish the whole piece at one time because your hand is only the same during mm -hmm. that one session. Mm -hmm. It's like calligraphy. You, right. Once right. you start writing, you, you got to keep Right. You can't go back. Going. I tried to go back and make a piece to match it, and my hand was completely different, you right. know, so right. it didn't work. Do you use a wide brush at that for point? For that, uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, 100% for that. Um, another Kent State, North Carolina. These are um, all gifts. Is that marbleized look under North Carolina, the background? I went through a big marbleized phase. What fun <laughs> that, that is. And that is so easy. You just paint a base and then you take your rag, a wet, painty rag, and uh -huh. just kind of Schmear. blot it on. <laughs> and again, it's just paint. If you don't like it, you keep adding. Yeah. And it comes that when it's dry, it looks like yeah, marble. Yeah, it totally or, does look like granite. it. Or granite. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Beautiful. Um, North Royalton, that was for a raffle. This is for a, a school raffle as well for CVCA. Um, this one was a really pretty table. I, I have a picture elsewhere of the base, but it was pretty. That is a beautiful antique That table. was a nice yeah. round table. Yeah. And here's the one I wish hadn't gotten away. This little piece here that was cute. Beautiful. And again, this is um, more of a marbleizing technique that I kind of did more straight on. So it isn't birch wood. You mm -mm. painted it mm -hmm. that color. That was painted. This is not... That is beautiful. It was fun. That was a fun one, and I do wish I still had it. <laughs> and then you changed the hardware? I changed the hardware almost always. Okay. Um, and then this one I painted the inside of the drawer, and that was for a raffle as well. Beautiful. Um, then I went wow. through a painting teachers. Teachers had rockers in their in my children's elementary school right, rooms. for the reading corner. Right. And so right. I was like, why don't I steal that and as a gift, thank them and paint up their rockers. And I, these are this is not original work. This um, name tag. It was one of the children's name tags on their desk that she had on every oh, okay. desk. So okay. I would just take elements from that and incorporate it into it. Right. To make it so personal. Right. Right. Just because it was something that I knew she liked because she had picked the name tags. Right, right. And <laughs> so, so now you, she's got her name on her chair right, on correct. her name tag. Yeah, and painted it blue. It was just a regular. It's an incredibly thoughtful gift. It was a fun, you know, it's it's fun. It, it has to It has to be, I, I can only work um, in the summer usually because I don't have a studio. Good. Yeah, where do you work? I work in my garage. In the garage. So no one gets to park in the garage in the summer. I just have paints all over the place. And I have a TV out there, and I can listen to my Audible books. And um, I love this. This is your little, your little she yeah. shed yeah, space. Yeah, that's exactly it. And everyone there. knows not to park in the garage in summer. And um, so it kind of has to be when inspiration strikes. I get that. And I you as an that. artist would I really know, I get understand that. that. You, when, you, when you get the, the feeling, you go. Right. And I, I was interested. You said you listen to Audible books. Mm -hmm. All the time. I do, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it frees your mind up from focusing right. too much on what you're doing and just let your hand True. do what it needs to do. True. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's that's. I mean, I'm always listening to a book, so yeah. that might, maybe that is what does it. Like, well, especially we'll with talk about our like reading this. list yeah. later. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um, more chairs, Which and this was a, a gift. Of I've, I've found an old sled and took the um, what was that um, flyer, radio flyer. Right. So I tried to make it the name of the school. Their okay. ra- CBCA the CBCA Royals. Royals. Yeah. So it's got the radio flyer. Um, that is beautiful. Font right. that I just printed out and did the same thing where I scribbled on the back. I suppose I should look into getting tracing paper. What? That would be a thought. Or transfer paper. Transfer, yeah. 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 It would probably Which save is like me a like carbonized on the back. But you're doing fine. Why change something that works? Yeah. You know, it is what it, I, it's it, is what what it is. Yeah. Look at that little baseball chair. So this is a, yeah, just a little... Um, chair for a great great nephews so how do you get your your inspiration for design like what it why usually an focuses owl around the person okay. usually now this this owl here this was um for a great niece this is a hand-me-down from her father's aunt Ooh. and so he asked they asked for me to update it for Peyton Okay. And um, she was very little, so she really didn't have many favorites in it. And I just saw that owl, and I just thought it's it would adorable. look really cute. So that one was just, but this, right. you know, these were Cleveland fans. So these a, great nephews are so it was Cleveland, cute. you know, baseball. That was a no-brainer. So sometimes it's it. easy, sometimes it's just more random. More random. I like the font you used to write Peyton, too. Um, again, printed out and traced, and then I mm-hmm. do my, my best to make it a little bit unique. So and then I you can, you know, that. dots and whatever. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thanks, it's fun. It has a little music box on the back, so when it rocks, it makes music. It's very cute. It is. It was very, very cute, very but it was kind of nerve wracking because it was a, an heirloom, right? And I didn't want to you don't want to mess it, it up. Yeah. yeah. So I think it turned out all right. I think right. they were happy with it. And here we are with the natural wood and Winnie the Pooh. This is the natural wood. This was a beautiful chair. Nothing had to be done with it. And the theme when he was born yeah. was Pooh. So, so that was an go. easy one. Uh-huh. And there again, the font is appropriate. It's the right font. It's the it right font. It is the Winnie the Pooh font. And then this is for a little lady who's three months old right now and just a $5 uh, find at Goodwill. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. someone said, oh, this is cute. And I'm like, well, it will be. It will be when <laughs> I get done Because it was that, just plain right? wood. Right, right. But it's it's beautiful. It's just fun. It's just yeah. something to play with. Well, she'll keep that forever. I well, mean, that's as I said, as long as it's not a timeout chair, <laughs> it can't be her her bad her bad place. <laughs> no, <laughs> um, another before and after. This is just a plain. And now here again on that chest, you taped off the top drawer the, to make yeah, stripes the, and to make the triangles. Yeah, I just played with each drawer differently. That was a winter project. I was really bored, and I just really mm-hmm. took my time with it and just played with it. Mm-hmm. Oh, so. it's, I, I like the different treatments on each drawer too. But the, so. here's a, an example of the. Um, in my impression, this is a plaid that didn't work. I tried and I couldn't quite figure it out, so it doesn't look, to me, it doesn't look plaid. I mean, it's colorful and whatever, but I feel like I'm getting closer <laughs> well, there's each plaid time. And there's plaid. <laughs> yes, and I wasn't in the mood to sand it no. off and stir it over, so. And I love the little floral design. Yes, that was just kind of a random one, too, so just playing with the same colors, yeah. and that was an auction. I want to know the next time one of your pieces go to auction. <laughs> well, they I, they usually just go for like school events. They're nothing fancy. All right, well, well. <laughs> um, again, a goodwill piece. Okay, and, and changed out the handles, dry brushed. Okay, so you primed the piece primed first. Primed it. And this one was um, Goodwill especially. You want to prime the insides of the drawers too. You want to paint out anything that might have any kind of an odor. Okay. You know, because sometimes they're sitting in someone's bedroom. Uh huh. Or a use dank that, basement. That or... kills paint and that just seals the whole thing up. Perfect. And uh, so the insides painted, the outsides painted, and just put on some simple mm-hmm. drawer pulls. Oh, it's a beautiful piece. You have a special talent for finding the right. Uh, treatment for each piece of furniture. Oh, I, thank you, you but I, I don't, I, I just kind of, like I said, I play with it until I, it looks, feels right. That's um, the talent. Okay, so. <laughs> here's my pencil chair, and this oh, was an cute. idea that I did see on the internet, and um, I happened to find this chair oh, that kind of lended works. itself to it. Yeah, so it looks like four pencils. It looks like four pencils, and I painted, you know, where so there's clever. on the bottom where you can actually see the pencil part. So, so clever. Um, so this was, again, for a teacher that I teacher. worked with, and um, 
I was in her classroom for a while. I was I worked as a substitute in the Nordonia school system for a while. This was a commission piece from a friend, um, and it was just beautiful. There was nothing that really had to be done with it other than cleaned up. But she said to go to town and is have that fun. A hope chest? It is in a cedar chest, and it was just. It's, I mean, it was. I forget how old it is over a hundred years old. So I was very yeah. nervous. Of course. Yeah. Um, but it really turned out nicely. I was happy to keep the base. They, the, the feet were fine. Right. So I was right. just able to kind of polish those up and stain them. And you have that combination of paint and wood. Yeah. So yeah. Th there was a lot of dry brushing um, and then sanding off the paint. And then after I put mm -hmm. the white on, I put on a, a real soft um, uh, beige to kind of just okay. wash over it to bring it down a little bit and right. then, then it helped the uh, the whatever the medallion pop. Uh -huh. It's beautiful. So Absolutely. It was beautiful. Do you I find on these older pieces like the medallion is it wood or is it another material? On the older pieces it certainly is wood. Yeah. Um, on most pieces I've found it's wood but they're a lot of times they're just attached they're just nailed mm -hmm. on like right. well like on this one. This dresser here See how it has the shell right. medallion? Right. Right. Well, it was going in my son's room, and okay. he didn't really Want need a shell. shell. Right. So I just went and found a piece at Lowe's right. that was just an upside-down triangle yeah. and changed yeah. out the hardware and painted it gray. Perfect. It was very simple. Perfect. So this That'd piece was $25 on one of those Facebook sites for local. Yeah, pick up I only. Mean, right. So, and then this one down here, um, this is the before. I found this at a Goodwill store. Just a little, a little vanity. vanity for a little girl. And this is for Taylor. And it turned out um, um, I had a lot of fun with it. I just kind of put a flouncy skirt on it. and That is so precious. Painted some, I found the fabric. A lot of times I'll find the fabric, and that lends itself to what I'm going to so paint. So you're drawing your inspiration from, from the, the fabric. fabric. So this one, for example, here's the, the different um, flowers on it, and they're painted on the top. I picked up some of those flowers and painted them on the top. I love it. So that was a yeah. shower gift. So unique. And then here's oh, the cradle. a cradle that um, looked like this when I bought it at the Goodwill store yeah. for $5, oh my which gosh. was cute. Yeah. And this is for a uh. poor little thing that just, she missed her shower because of COVID. Oh. So um, we, I sent it down to her separately. She lives in Columbus. This is for Kinsley, who was just born last week. How precious. So is her that? mother's a tomboy. I don't know if she'll, she'll put dolls in it, but she can put her baseballs in it and her trucks in there it. You too. Go. There you go. <laughs> so. That's beautiful. And now the chair. We're coming the to chair. the chair. I see the picture of the chair and the chair. Tell me how. Okay, so this is a, a birthday gift for my sister in law that my brother asked me to do something with. It's been in his garage for a couple of years. And oh. he said, Well, can maybe you can do something this for her birthday is coming right. up here in a couple of days. He says, Can you do something? I'm going to tell her I put it out in the back shed because it's been sitting in the garage for too long. Right. So I had it. So I took it apart. Um, I went to sit on it and practically fell through. Mm. Because the base was completely, it was so old. Here's how it, this was a before. Okay. And again, wood, it was, it was pretty wood, but it was so dinged up. Right. Um, that there was no way that the, the wood could stay. So I had to take the whole bottom off. So you reconstructed the chair. Which, again, I'm not an upholsterer. Yeah, you kind of are So now. I didn't know, but see, <laughs> if, I don't know if you can see, but... Um, on one of the pictures, you can see the base here. It didn't go all the way down. It stopped oh, I see. here. Yes. So an upholsterer had uh, had done it well. Right. Right. Even right, though the fabric was ripping, but there yeah. was no way I had the tools to do to, that. to tuck it under and leave the wood show there. Right. So I was just okay. I guess we're going to yeah. have to cover the whole right, thing right. up. But again, like I was saying. Here it is after I sanded it. Okay. So I just took the sander or my hand and I just sanded the whole thing as much mm -hmm. as I could because okay. you have to get off any of the loose, um, whatever. It wasn't painted, but ever, any sealant that it had on it before. Okay. So, and then here's what it kind of looked like after 
I sanded it. And those little medallions, are they metal? No, those, those are built right in, carved right into the wood. Oh my, okay. So that was kind of tricky. So then I took the liquid sander, and this is what it does. It gives us this kind of sheen. I just, since I knew I was gonna be on here, I thought I could take some pictures and show you that after you sand it, you wipe it off real well with um, a wet cloth, okay. let it dry, and then you right. just soak the thing in this liquid sander. Just completely clean it off and soak it, and um, it's a great product. You can use it on cupboards if you're doing cupboards. Okay. Uh, or, or any drawers in your house, then you don't have to even take it off. You give it a quick sand, do the liquid sander, and then it really helps the paint adhere. So it just gives it this kind of sheen. I you may can tell get it's some and gray. try it on some of my acrylic paintings. Uh, me, oh, so. interesting. Yeah. yeah, why not? And then um, it was kind of funny, since again, I don't know what I'm doing, um, to uh, seal the p bottom portion, I just used um, weed fabric. The, the black weed fabric oh. is underneath oh, here. From so the garden does, center? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> and it totally, it, it works. looks exactly like what I think <laughs> an upholsterer would use. Oh, no, an upholsterer would probably shake their heads. No, but it, <laughs> it seals it off and at least it gives it a clean look from the bottom. It's Not beautiful. Not many people yeah, look mean, on the bottom. Those are your secrets. You don't have to tell us those shortcuts. <laughs> well, <laughs> but I mean, I'm glad you did, but, but, but it's, who would know? And it was less expensive. Mm -hmm. If I got it from Lowe's and if I got it from the fabric oh, store. Yes, I'm sure. And yeah. then I just took a little um, sander and sanded off the little medallions. Yeah. And in the back, I just took a little, very light sanding just to kind of pop those okay. a little bit. And what kind of paint is that? That's a spray paint. That's a spray paint. Yeah, that nice. one. And I rarely spray paint because I don't have yeah. luck for some reason on flat surfaces. Right. I feel like it, the sheen changes. Okay. I don't know why. If it's a flat surface, I, it, I just usually <clears throat> hand paint it. But if it's something like this, um, it seems to, it's, and I, well, there was no way I was going to get in every right, nook and cranny right, in the back there right. and keep it consistent. So that was about perfect. two cans of spray, of paint. spray paint. Perfect. Absolutely. And it was an outdoor, and, you know, it was one of the Can heavy we duty talk about paints. your supplies a little bit here? Well, you that's use? funny because I go to, whenever I go to Lowe's or yes. Home Depot, I go to their their um, paint section mm -hmm. and they have mist tints. So for right. example, you can get a gallon of mist tint yeah, paint. Just I just look and see what colors gallon. they have yep. and it's five bucks instead of 20 some dollars. Again, my husband's not a big fan because I have all this, all these Extra gallons paint. of paint. Um, again, craft store, um, little paints. Little That's paint. what I did with this. How did you do those dots? Um, I have a stylus somewhere. Oh. I have a little stylus. It's just a, it's literally a tool with it, a dot. It's not the end of the paintbrush? And some of them are. Yeah, the tip. Yeah. yeah in fact, this one was all paintbrush. This was before yeah. I had a stylus. So instead of using the brush, you're using you're the end using of the it. You're using the tip. Yeah, and just, just upside down. Perfect. So, Absolutely perfect. Yeah, I just was playing with this one the other day, and um, I can't decide if I'm going to fill in all the black or not. Okay. Because well. I kind of like some of the black showing. Yeah, me too. <laughs> you got. Sometimes you have to know when to stop. I could go back and I could put <laughs> so dots. Brilliant. I could put dots and dots and dots, you know, uh, on top of them. But sometimes you have to know when to stop. And that was a little table from Goodwill, and it looked yes. it had a, like a, it's a piece of, it was like wallpaper, Tinkerbell or something like yeah. that. So I just sanded that off and yeah. painted it up. It's a cute little side table. It's beautiful. I have no yeah, idea where it's going to go. I have to seal it. And it'll find its home. It'll find a home. Right. The the window. You brought a window. I did bring a window. And I, that was my big find at a church rummage sale a long time ago. And back in the, it was just a, a plain white. Right. It had just been hanging in someone's right. house. With the beveled glass. Right. And I wanted it for my house because we had just bought a home. Oops, sorry. And um, I, back in the day, you kind of crackled everything. Yeah. That was one of my first things. So I, I crackled it. I had a, a gold underlay and then I painted black over it and crackled it. Okay. Again, one of my very first pieces, probably the first one. Um, and then, you know, 20 years later now, the crackle's kind of passe. Uh huh. Right. So right. I took it down and sanded it off and stained it the color of my dining room table and it hangs over the dining room table. Over it. Uh, uh, against the wall. Against the wall. Yeah, our okay. dining room table is pushed up against the wall okay. until we use it. Yeah, then you pull it. Um, yeah. So it, it's a piece of art on the wall, really. It, it really is. is. That's yeah, and that's not. Again, I took it down to nothing, and yeah. um, it, it, it's the glass that makes that yeah. the piece of art. Now this little piece I painted with leftover paint from this chair. 
Okay. Yeah, I just sprayed yeah. it. A little spray. And, a little and again, and... I don't know how to do flowers. I have no idea how to paint flowers, so I went online, <laughs> and some. They just kind of show you the one, your paint the one stroke. Like is that the this? one stroke? Yeah. Well, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't um, mix paints on the. Um, on the brush like a lot of people do. Right. I just kind of... You mixed on the palette. Uh, you mixed <laughs> yes, right on your canvas. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. I, that one stroke to me is, is very tricky. I can't do that. Right. That looks right. very hard. I, I, a lot of artists just mix right on the canvas and let it blend in. And, uh -huh. yeah. I always thought that, that yeah, it looked works. easy, but it's not. I, I no. think that's tricky. So again, but. I just leftover paints from different, um, you know, rooms in my house. I use them for a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. and, so you've got uh, gallon paint, acrylic. You've got spray paint. Oh, and these you've are got need, craft paint. And if you need a specific color for something, yeah. just get a sample size. Right. You can go and, and get this specific yeah, color little, and get it in sample size, and it's like three dollars. Do you use um, chalk paint or milk paint? Okay, good question. Yeah. I the first thing I did was that baby cradle in chalk yeah. paint, yeah. and it was fine. Yeah. But I didn't get the hype. I don't understand. I mean, it, it worked right. fine. It worked fine, but why am I paying so well, much money for a exactly, little bit of pay? Exactly. Right. Now, I did take, they had a product that was um, called a, a grunge that you kind of wiped over it that kind of brought out some of the texture, which yeah. I liked a lot. I thought right. that was nice. But yeah. again, I could have done it with a rag and leftover mm -hmm. paint, too. Mm -hmm. Right. So. I, I agree with you. I've used it once or twice, and you, you get that kind of dull finish uh -huh. that's... Maybe and, and I think it's a long last. Maybe that's the, maybe the attraction that's it. to it. Is that it lasts forever? I can remember years ago making milk paint. <laughs> making it, wow! And but it, you didn't see the benefit. No, and it was it was not for canvases. It was more for craft painting. Mm -hmm. And I did not see buttermilk, yeah. buttermilk and um, lime. Maybe it was a combination of things that you had to search around town for and. I, I didn't see the benefit in it. Again, it might, it, I don't know, I, I, I don't see it, but a lot of people just swear by it, and it might yeah. be for longevity of the piece of furniture or, or whatever. authenticity right. to the period right, of time, right, right, maybe. Right, but Yeah, some people know how to really work it. It's thick. Yeah. It's not easy to work with. Yeah. So. I agree with you. Find what works. Right. Leftovers. Find what's effective and cost efficient and. Mm-hmm. And know when to stop. You're so right. As soon as you said that, it was because every artist, no matter what they do, that's always the the key. Mm -hmm. When to stop, right? Well, yeah. that's true. Yeah, and, and I, it was something that I had to learn because I think of some of my earlier pieces, I just kind of kept adding. I, you know, I kept more painting. Thing, one more thing. Yeah, like I would have been fussing with the inside of yeah, here, and I yeah. don't think I'm going to. I think the no. top is kind of fun and less is more. You know, this might even be sealed and set outside. Who knows? So no, it, it's too pretty for that. <laughs> well, if I seal it well, if I you know use a nice acrylic, it should be fine. So, um, yeah. Wow, this is so cool. Thank you for bringing everything out here today. You're Thank welcome. you for being here on our welcome. day of Corona and COVID, and everyone was afraid, and here we are, and we're home painting and doing fine. Hope everybody else is home painting, doing fine. Yep. yep, thank you. We're all home. We're, wow. we're doing good at our house, so. Thank you, Betsy. Thank you so much, Kathleen. Okay.